Somewhere in the Pacific, a U.S. Navy carrier task force steams into Japanese waters. Lookouts signal the approach of enemy planes and anti-aircraft shells fill the sky. The sky is filled with flaming tracers and shell fire. The plane dives to escape, but it's too late. Another zooms in to attack and meets the same fate. One after another, Japanese bombers are shot flaming into the sea. These are official Navy films, dramatic record of the terrific toll the Americans are taking of Japanese aircraft. More than 5,000 destroyed as the Allied sea and air offensive thunders on. Point's colorful class of 1944 graduates upon a momentous day, the beginning of the Battle of Europe. From General Somerville, head of Army Service Forces, the 474 new officers hear a reassuring message of victory. Diplomas are awarded to cadets representing every state in the Union, a valuable addition to the armies of the United States. An outstanding graduate is the son of General Dwight D. Eisenhower, here with his mother. Young Eisenhower was one of 20 general's sons to graduate this year. In a final stirring review, they say goodbye to school days. Soon they'll join their commands on battlefronts around the world. West, Chinese air cadets training in the United States have already won the name of Flying Dragons. Today they fly to New Mexico to visit a tribe of American Indians. The Indians stage the traditional Eagle Dance Festival in honor of their brothers from the Far East. Sons of ancient China and early America renew old ties of friendship. Up New York's Fifth Avenue, American fighting men are on parade as the nation opens its fifth war bond drive. Contingents from every branch of the armed forces are in the line of march. The demonstration finds the American people solidly backing Allied attacks in Europe and the Pacific. Their slogan, buy bonds for more bullets. Clark honors American women attached to the Allied Fifth Army in Italy. For meritorious service, the general awards a plaque to the entire platoon. The mess sergeants salute the girls with a banquet in the field. After hours, the girls take time out for sports. 
and some even have their own victory gardens. Air Force men have a great time shopping in Italy. Using mostly sign language, they seem to be getting by. Eating is another problem. The waiter always brings the wrong thing. So the boys decide to go back to school and learn Italian right on the spot. And look who's the teacher. A young bambino who's having the time of his life giving his American friends a sample of the language as it is spoken. This huge concentration of gliders at an American air base gives a dramatic picture of the role airborne troops are playing in the Battle of Europe. Shock troops, armed to the teeth, pile aboard. Jeeps and anti-tank guns are stowed away. In a flash, ground crews attach the tow ropes and the sky trains are off. Powerful troop-carrying transports hauling gliders fully loaded with soldiers and equipment. Target, they bail out. This is how they landed in Normandy, and they landed in numbers that surprised the enemy. They land with their noses in the dust. gets quite a mouthful. With technique tried and tested in North Africa, Italy, and the South Pacific, these hardy paratroopers are rewriting textbooks on military strategy. Ingenious recovery traps enable the planes to pick up the empty gliders at five-second intervals. There they go, back for more troops. Airborne infantry spearheading the attack in Europe. Mm -hmm. 